And it's why we are introducing an entirely new class of Windows PCs engineered to unleash the power of distributed AI across the edge and cloud. We call this new category Copilot Plus PCs. Well, well, well. After four years, Microsoft finally decided to compete with the M series chips. Performance and battery. The result, Copilot Plus PCs are the fastest Windows PCs ever built. And if we wanted to do a comparison, they're 58% faster than the most advanced MacBook Air with the M3 processor. Gotta be honest with you here, folks. I've never been this confused regarding the Surface keynotes, but we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Two main devices have been introduced, Surface Laptop 7 and Surface Pro 10. Um, actually, oh, what's that? Sir, they're calling it something else. Um, Surface Pro X? No. Oh, I got it, I got it. Surface Pro X 2. Apparently, they're not calling it anything. Oh, holy sh**. So, after launching Surface Pro 5, which was just called Surface Pro, Microsoft decided, no, that's stupid, and went back to numbered naming scheme. A couple of years later, they launched Surface Pro X, which had ARM chip inside. Now they launched the 10th iteration of Surface Pro, and they're calling it Surface Pro 11. No, no, 11th edition. And if that's not enough, the business device is called Surface Pro 10 for business. Microsoft, what in the actual f***? This is one of the most significant events in the computing history. We can feel the push that's moving us away from x86 and x64 architecture. For the first time, the company has gone all in with the ARM architecture courtesy of Qualcomm. Surface Laptop 7th edition comes in two main configurations, 13 inch and 15 inch, accompanied by Gorilla Glass 5. The former comes with either Snapdragon X Plus or Elite, with built in NPUs, 16 or 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, up to 1 terabyte of removable storage, 20 hour of video playback time on battery two USB-C ports, one USB-A, a headphone jack, and Surface Connect. The latter comes with only Snapdragon Elite, an SD card reader, and 22 hour of video playback time. Huh. Neat. Moving on to the Surface Pro, we've got OLED and LCD. They've got the same resolution, but OLED is way better quality-wise. Snapdragon X Plus or Elite will power the device up to 32 gigabytes of RAM, up to one terabyte of removable storage, two USB-C ports, and a Surface Connect. In addition, we've got a new type cover with the most notable feature of Bluetooth connectivity, meaning you can detach it and still type. The rest of the keynote was focused on this AI thing. Copilot was the star of the show, so much so that Microsoft dedicated an entire key on the keyboard to the Copilot. I don't really care about the AI features, but we will talk about one particular dystopian feature in just a little bit. For now, let's address the chip in the room. Snapdragon X series of chips are designed to compete with Intel and Apple's M series. And that's one of the selling points of these new devices, as Microsoft said this. We finally feel we have a very competitive product between Surface Pro and the Surface laptops. We have essentially the best specs uh, when it comes to ARM-based silicon and performance or the NPU performance. Microsoft says the new Surfaces are 58% faster than the MacBook Air with M3. Really? 58% faster, eh? Here's the Geekbench score of regular M3 MacBook Air. Single core is higher, but there are three different versions of Snapdragon Elite, and the highest of them has a lower single score, but slightly higher multi-core score. This is speculation, but just looking at the very preliminary raw numbers, Surface is just a tad bit ambitious. That's not even the main thing to focus on here. As much as I despise Apple, and I would love for some serious competition to enter into the market, Mac OS is light years ahead of Windows. That translates into M-series hardware and Mac OS software, interconnected communication, interaction, and efficiency. Windows has improved a lot and doesn't feel like a total disaster on ARM, but framing it as a MacBook competitor, it does feel a little delusional. To run the older applications like x86, x64, Prism, the emulation layer, is going to be used. However, as this article from XDA Developers puts it, it's not great. The applications can't even take the full advantage of the hardware. There might be some good news, however. A lot of companies are embracing ARM, like Asus with its VivoBook, Acer with its Swift series, Dell with its upcoming XPS lineup, HP with its OmniBook, and Samsung with its upcoming Galaxy Books. So I can imagine a world where Windows laptops go head-to-head -head with MacBooks while also running legacy 
x86, x64 applications without reasonable compromise. Nevertheless, I don't like the AI direction the companies are taking. I mean, they're not even practical most of the times and in most use cases. Speaking of practicality, Windows Recall, the feature that is an absolute nightmare and no one should use. One of the dreams we've always had is, how do we introduce memory, right? Photographing memory into what you do on the PC. And now we have it. So it's called recall. It's not keyword search, right? It's semantic search over all your history. And it's not just about any document. We can recreate moments from the past, essentially. Windows will take constant snapshots and build a timeline that you can go back to if you need to recall something. What was I doing an hour ago? Did I save that document or did I complete that survey? You get the point. Now we can agree that this sounds problematic, but let's hear Microsoft's side to this. There could be this reaction from some people that this is pretty creepy. Microsoft is taking screenshots of everything I do. Yeah, I mean, that's why that it can only do it on the edge, right? So this is like, you know, you, can't, you have to put two things together. This is my computer. This is my recall. Uh, and it's all being done locally. Everything is being done locally. But you are on a device that's connected to the internet with so many telemetry services running. And they might want to access your metadata or usage patterns. Not to mention different ads placement in Windows 11 on your device. So I don't know about you, but if I get a Copilot Plus PC, I'm staying a light year away from that feature. Let's take a break from our dystopian nightmare and hear some good news. Microsoft has made the device repair and internal components replacement simpler than ever. Not only you can access the device internals, but you'll also find a QR code that will help you in disassembly and other unexpected surprises. So so good job, Microsoft. Now, please tone down the AI. Yeah, I don't think they're going to. Yeah, yeah, didn't think so. Where were we? Oh, the Surface lineup. Except for the OLED display model, the rest of the devices are pretty iterative upgrades. My favorite is the 15-inch Surface laptop model with incredible I.O. If your workload is light and you're absolutely sure that no reasonable compromise will be made if you get an ARM laptop, then yeah. Go for it, if you can afford it, that is. Not gonna lie, the price is pretty steep for a laptop that doesn't come with a dedicated GPU or the standard CPU. If you already own a previous iteration, then there's no need to upgrade. I was pretty surprised when a business that has a massive stake in providing other businesses with hardware and software is going on. Around 3,300 big companies use Surface products. And as you already know, most companies are pretty comfortable using legacy devices and software. So even, let's say, at the end of the Windows life, Microsoft still provides security updates and tailored updates to its clients. That's a pretty risky gamble, in my opinion, to drastically shift your strategy. But that's where the Surface Pro 10 for business comes in. Same story here, except it can feature either Intel Core Ultra 5 or 7 processor and up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. All in all, these Snapdragon SoCs are extremely efficient with amazing battery life. But you should first assess your dominant use case before making a purchase. Thanks for the support, guys. If you like this perspective, please like this video and subscribe to the channel because DD Mega Doo Doo. This is a rogue hat. Catch you guys later.